welcome. I gotta fix my chair a little bit. I um, started out and I forgot to put the uh, video on. So welcome to Environmental Coffee House. Hi everybody. I got a good show today. I have to. I have to admit. Um, I want to talk about pipelines. I want to talk about oil gas pipelines. But you know, because we never do. A lot of times, what we talk about is the infrastructure. We talk about. Um, we talk about. We want green energy. We want this and we want that. But man, let me tell you, um, it's like, it's like, how are we ever really going to get rid of this shit, right? And happy Easter, Kim is Kim the mod says happy Easter. Um, of course, I'm home alone. Uh, my husband leaves to go <laughs> today. He's back, back out there cutting wood out. I don't care. Let him go outside. So anyway, this is a good, a good topic. And um, I am Sandy Shellis. So I want to start out today with you guys as you join up. Keep going. I don't know how many people are with me or what. I, I have it set. If you want to share on Facebook, go ahead because I am multi-streaming. And uh, it's, a, it's, again, it's an interesting topic, but I really can't... Um, I can't, uh, I can't do all this, all the sharing and all that crap because even though I'm a one woman show, how am I going to get the stuff done? So we're going to get started with what got me here and hi, Karen Reese. Hi, Karen Reese. Happy Easter. And Val is here in Southern Indiana. Very cool. Very, very, very cool. Hi, hi, hi. All right, great. Let me get started. We'll talk later. And, um, oh, TC, are you going to go for a walk? Well, I might later. I didn't. Um, okay. It is counterintuitive that peak oil, peak oil will cause the price to go down, not up. Well, we might go there in a bit, but first I want to go over, and I think a little too, a little too high on my chair. I'm going to go over some pictures. So let me get these pictures up. Okay. I'm going to pull this up and we're going to look at these pictures because a lot of them are pretty hideous. So I thought we would get started with these and just look at what these pipelines look like. We don't think about that when we go to get gas or when we're warming our houses all over the world. Do you really think about where it comes through and what, what kinds of uh, things can happen? Isn't that just like lovely? These pipelines are, and, and here's oil platform. I decided, I just, I emailed myself from one computer to the other <laughs> and I didn't have time to make a video. And I, you know what? I could make a video. Pipelines were my passion. I used to fight the one here. We're still fighting one here, but we had one. But I mean, I was all up in the Dakota Access Pipeline and, and we're going to go through later uh, some articles and I'm going to show you what, um, look at them. These things are like, look at the size. No, if, if you look at the size of the boat, you know, those are gigantic. Look at this. These are all over the world. I didn't label them. I'm really lazy today. I didn't label them. They're just stock photos. And this one actually is the Arctic. This is, this is the Arctic. This is where there are um, Arctic oils in the Barents Sea and in West Siberia. And I was really interested because I started out reading this, uh, an article in um, Desmog blog, and it was about what's going on with pipelines since we're all so consumed with coronavirus. And uh, let me get the other ones up. I'm going to shut this because the other ones are really good too. Uh, look at that. Look at that. Now I know that they do maintenance. I know that they're called little piggies that go into in in down in here. And but these are these are thousands of miles. Thousands of miles of pipelines all over the world. Thousands of miles. The infrastructure is overwhelming and unbelievable. But it is believable from everywhere. 
This is what we don't want going underground where we live. Look at that. I mean, it's gross. It's just gross. This, I think that's in, I think that's in South America. That one. Look at when they're being built. They're they're going underground. This is in the United States when they take the property from from you by eminent domain, and they don't care anymore. Enbridge, Dakota Access. You know, the Enbridge, Entergy, there's all these different companies. But look at these things. And this is... Unknown caller. Oh, spam risk. I had to shut my spam thing. I have this thing called RoboCop. <laughs> and it takes the spam calls, but I had to shut it off for a reason. But these are pretty... This is the infrastructure of our life style. All of this is all over the world, the infrastructure of our lifestyle, guys. And very few of us can do anything anywhere without something coming from these, this lifestyle, you know, these people. This is uh, the West East one. This starts in uh, uh, Xinjiang, China, and ends in Shanghai, China. And it shows, look at, Aren't they just, it's just, to me, this is not beauty. This is hideous. But I'm a hypocrite because everything I have here probably was made with oil. And there's no one I know that, I mean, the, the ballpoint, the pen, oil, plastic, oil. Here's the, uh, the Yamal in uh, Europe, 2,607 miles. This picture, can you see it? It says, um, oh, Jean, I'll read that after. Oh my gosh, she's taking me off my topic, but it's a good one. This incredibly long natural gas um, pipe goes from Western Siberia to eventually connect to the Yamu Pen uh, Peninsula with Germany. The planning for this pipeline began in 1992 and an intergovernmental agreement was signed between Russia, Belarus, and Poland in 93. A second pipeline was planned in 2005 and opened in 2007. So the 2000s, you know, that decade was really pipeline central. This one is the... Um, 48 inch in diameter and travels from Alberta to Quebec and is the longest pipeline in Canada. Actually, I don't know because this, some of this is a little bit out of date, um, but you get the drift. You get the drift. It was built in the 1950s. It was a technological achievement at the time, but I'm hoping that it's still not tight in the 1950s technology. And there's my background picture, which that is wild. All that production of all of that material that makes pipelines. Look at this. And it's always by the water. Look at the ship in the back. It's always by the water. These things are just, you know, some people look at these engineers and, and the people in the fossil fuel industry, they look at these as beauty. They look at these as money. They look at these as, as, um, as, as life. These are life. This gives life to the civilized world. This gives life to the global industrial economy. This is what life is on, you know, on Earth. Our uh, life can be boiled down sometimes to a pipeline, to a processing plant, to a platform. You know, there's the guys working. And, and these guys will say, well, gee, you know, around the world, where am I going to get a job? without this industry, right? Look at that. <laughs> Sorry guys that I didn't tell you where everything was, but all right. Well, it's pretty, um, I mean, it's overwhelming really. And back when I started to learn about pipelines and I realized I couldn't find my notes today. I was looking, but I, I, I have a lot of notes that I kept from things I've done over the years, you know, and I, uh, I couldn't find them, but it, I had every bit of information about how many miles of pipelines are in the United States, what kind, you know, um, the Northern Axis, the one we fought, and now they're trying to get it through again. Uh, 
it is it's it is overwhelming i think it's overwhelming and it's indicative of the fact that it's not just i want green energy it's it's just not so i thought next we would go into the uh longest oil pipelines in the world and this comes from the Rapid City Journal. Now, this was as of 2017. Could have changed. Things are, but I'm not 100% sure. But I wanted you to just get the drift of the enormity of what we're facing when you think of, um, when you think of going into, you know, the green economy or, 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 or the Green New Deal in the United States or lower carbonization. So crude oil pipelines have been in the news since Donald Trump's issuance of memorandum supporting the expedited completion of the Keystone XL and the Dakota Access. And they are 1,179 and 1,172 respectively. But let me tell you something. They are the 10th and the 11th because... China is insane. Their pipeline is, is insane. The West East Pipeline of PetroChina, this one is 5,410 miles. 5,410 miles. You guys, um, let me pull down the, the chat and see if I can see what you guys are talking about. Hi, Jody Connolly. Ah, just a quick say hello. Oil is the major cause of overpopulation. That's what Val said. Yep, I'll have to change where those um where those go, but we'll do that. Um we'll do that after. So let's go on and uh we got a lot of people with us today. I don't know. I know Kevin did one earlier, so probably you're all burned out, but I'm doing a completely different show. So that's China. And then so that's Petro China. Then there's the Gasoon pipeline. This one is 3,100 miles, and it starts in Mato Grosso uh, do Sul, Brazil, and it ends in uh, Marajaro, Maranao, Brazil. Forgive me, Jean, <laughs> for my Spanish. Uh, well, Portuguese, right? Uh, and then there's the Yamo Europe pipeline. This one is 2,607 miles, and this starts in the Uruguay gas field in Siberia and ends in Gorsica, Poland. So do you get the enormity of um, of what we're talking about? Like Val says, we wrap vegetables in freaking plastic. And the only way we do and live, why we li how we live is because of what we're looking at. Plants and pipelines and, 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 and what happens to the planet from doing it. This is the Trans-Saharan Pipeline. And this one here, see how they go? They go, it's up in Italy. It's, uh, it goes all the way down and through Tunisia. I mean, it, it goes up to, um, to Spain. And then they go down. They go down. They're all over the planet, okay? They're all over the planet. And so here, the gas pipeline, the, 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 to this one it was um one two three four five six seven seven pipelines are represented in this graphic of the trans-saharan one and uh david asks if the pipes are made of oil no david the pipes are made of uh i think stainless steel they might be lined with rubber um i know that they uh, the technology has changed even in a couple of years since i was a pipeline crazed person and uh i was going to marches with my lousy back and fighting and speaking at uh town meetings and at uh hearings for the new york state dec against the pipeline that we were fighting because I live on Marshall Shale, and we are a fracker's dream, and New York is not being fracked, and I don't want it to be fracked. And so I'll fight. I'll lay down on my property and let them bulldoze right over me because they're not fracking me. Uh, Trans-Canada Pipeline, 2,005 miles, starts in Alberta and ends in Quebec. So, you know, 
this was from a, okay, so I'm done with that. And it's pretty, uh, it's pretty enormous. And the reason, I mean, I got onto it again, just because I have an inquisitive mind and I'm always reading something or I'm always thinking of something and pipelines just, it came to me today. So we have another, we have a couple more articles and, um, what's going on in the, um, Joshua Vickers more correlated to, okay, we're not going to do this now because, um, listen, Kim, take care of anything in the, in the chats. <laughs> Because I want to go to the next article, honestly. This is a, uh, I have stuff set up and I thought would be interesting to look at. And this is from a, 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 a publication called howmuch.net. And this one is a good, this is a good graphic, but it talks about what crude oil is. The fossil fuel, we all here know, but I'll read it anyway. The fossil fuel derived from marine plants and animals that died millions of years ago before the dinosaurs. In its liquid form, crude oil can be found underground in reservoirs, sedimentary rocks, and tar sands, like in Canada. You know, everybody says tar sands, they think of Canada. Um, crude oil has been used to produce petroleum products such as gasoline, waxes, and plastics. Everything that we, even this is glass, might have some plastic in the paint. I don't know. And let's not talk about trolls. Let's be nice to everybody. Everybody can say what they want as long as nobody's ignorant to each other. Please don't be ignorant in the chat. No ignorance today. It's it's a nice day and people do disagree, but let's go on. Let me go on. So crude oil has been used to produce petroleum products such as gasoline, waxes, plastic. All right. It's used heavily in manufacturing, industrialization, and transportation. So since crude oil is found in certain geological areas, some countries are more likely than others to be sitting on large oil reserves. And our new visualization, now this isn't so new, but it was as new as I could get today. Uh, oil reserves, oh, they're measured in GBBL, which is billion barrels. Just imagine the enormity of billion barrels. Let me just see something for a minute. I think, I thought I had a bigger graphic of this. I did. Let me see if I can make it bigger so that you can see this. It's just the enormity of the countries and how much. And the United States really doesn't have a lot of oil in comparison to, let's say, Saudi Arabia. And these numbers, again, they've probably changed uh and you could go to this website. I did go to the website to try to see if it was updated, but I didn't see the updates. Oh, and I forgot to, well, no, I mean, I, talk, I forgot to tell somebody that um, I was um, live, my sister, oh, my cousin. Okay, so listen, don't argue in the chat, watch. Canada, Canada has a lot of oil, the biggest crude oil reserves. And th these are just reserves. Now, the top 10 countries with the biggest crude oil reserves are Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, Canada, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, Russia, Libya, and then the U.S. comes in last. Now, when you look at those countries, of course you understand why the United States is an aggressive country. <laughs> to, well, maybe not to Canada, but I mean, you know, chomping at the bit, look at Libya, Kuwait, Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Venezuela. Come on. We're not going to go so political here, but you know, you really can put this stuff together in your head. About half the countries in the top 10 list are located in the Middle East and the North Africa reason, region. Hi, Jeff Pearson. I noticed. Hello. Um, they are members of OPEC, which is the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. So this is kind of a review today. Interestingly, there is no clear correlation between the country's size and its amount of oil reserves. For example, Kuwait, which has a landmass of 17,818 square kilometers, has 
101.5 billion barrels in oil reserves, whereas Russia, which has a land mass almost 10 times larger, only has 80 billion barrels in oil reserves, which again, you could plug in another number because I'm sure they're updated for 2020. While the products created, then again, the statistics may not be out yet. This was a year ago. So while the products created with crude oil can make life and work easier, the cost to wildlife and the environment can be negative due to issues. Oh my goodness. Somebody just made a long one. Oh, it's Heidi. Hi, Heidi. Um, while the products created with crude oil can make life and work easier, the cost to wildlife and the environment can be negative due to issues such as pollution and oil spills. The varied amounts of oil reserves in each country can also lead um, to an imbalance of energy imports and exports. Since the U.S. hosts only about, blah, 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 might be less, might be more now, of about the world's crude oil reserves and imports almost 8 million barrels a day, finding alternative forms of energy is more important than ever. And guess what? What did we find in alternative energy? What has uh, Donald Trump done to give the United States energy independence? We are fracking the living shit out of states. Forgive me, I read, I get dry. Um, who is, um, I don't know what's going on in the um, chat. Excuse me, but I need to do that every now and then. Well, I'm going to have to let the um, mods handle whatever's going on in here. Usually we don't get um, people fighting. And the natural progressive is with us. So much love to you, Sandy, and everybody else. I have to do chores and things. Weekends are crazy. I know, so do I, but I did this. <laughs> and I could do other things. Okay, please cool it down and don't argue in the chat. All right, next article. We're going to go to another one. And the next one is, okay, so this one comes from a publication called Underground Construction. Now, how long have I been on? Okay, it's not that bad. Underground Construction. See, I also like to read the trade papers and online places. And uh, I learned, I mean, several years ago, I found out in Ohio, high schools are bankrolled. Several high schools are bankrolled. And these kids go to school and they graduate to be field workers, pipeline builders in, in fracking states. I wish I had found my notes, but this is good enough. This one is from last year also, and, and, and it was giving an outlook. And basically what all this is, is illustri it, it illustrates what the hell's going on that we don't always talk about. I know Heidi, Heidi had a very long um, post before and hi Heidi, but of course she's a, she's a, an activist. She's an anti-pipeline activist in the United States. And, but that's just the United States, you know, the world is, is again, a maze of pipelines. So this one was the outlook for construction and they go and they talk about, uh, different types of things. Um, how the oil prices skidded in 18 amid oversupply. It always changes. And we're going to go into the current um, problems going on. But I just wanted to show you this because it's a trade magazine. And, they, and I had put in these two paragraphs in my opening narrative for the, the live stream. The latter being particularly true, we're lifting an oil export ban and the predicted growth of global LNG has led to massive infrastructure development, particularly along the Texas and Louisiana Gulf coasts, including oil and LNG export terminals, new and expanding liquefaction facilities, and the pipeline capacities to supply them. Now, let me ask you something. With all of this going on in our industrial civilization, and the slide we have 
towards authoritarianism and going to the right. Do you think that we're going to unmask, have the ability to protest this stuff? I mean, Extinction Rebellion, they they are they didn't specifically target this fossil fuels but i don't see this happening so in the united states the uh the it's the construction and this is pipelines over under you know it's increased throughout uh, north america with the heaviest activity has been concentrated around the major shale, you know, the Marcella shale, the U.S. shale, which is the Permian basis of West Texas and New Mexico and Marcellus uh, Utica basins of Appalachia. And, and again, I'm right on the corner of Pennsylvania. I mean, I'm in New York, but I'm near Pennsylvania where they just love to frack. Uh, so pipeline capacity has increased. And there was the Atlantic Coast Pipeline, and then there was the Mountain Valley, and the Mountaineer Express, and there's a number, um, a, a number of major perm, uh, Permian projects that were scheduled in 2019. So I'd have to look up, but you get it, you know, you get it. And these other companies like Houston-based Jupiter uh, Energy Group commenced an open season in December. They wanted a 650-mile one. Then we go down to um, we go down to Mexico, and there were seven thousand fifty miles. Okay, which is eleven thousand three hundred and forty-seven kilometers of gas pipelines in Mexico. Is anybody protesting there? And the company that operates them is called um, Permex, or Pemex. So as you see, it's a very big fight we have, if we even fight it at all. I'm not telling people not to be activists. This is just so enormous. And the way things are going, I don't know, TransCanada, they have two more pipelines that were completed. Um, and Canada has, of course, we have the controversial Keystone, but oil rich Alberta back in, when, when was it? They were producing in 2018, a record 4.9 million barrels of oil a day at the close of that year. And this is money. This is a lot of money. This is all money. Money, 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 money. Who's going to walk away in this capitalist global economy? Who is going to walk away? Even China. Maybe they're somewhat capitalist. They might not be a democracy. But everybody wants to make money. That's all it is. Keystone was is going to be, what, 1,179 miles with a 36-inch uh, pipe. That starts in uh, Hardesty, Alberta. And that's supposed to go to Steel City, Nebraska, and it would interconnect with another because they all interconnect. The Trans Mountain expansion, this would nearly triple capacity. It probably already has. So as you see, don't, you know, the, the, the enormity of all this, guys, let's see what the, uh, before we go um, into it, the next one. Kim says we can't drink oil. Uh, no, we can't. No, we can't. And Shirhani, she said XR is working within the system. And then there's all of the pipeline and fossil fuel people, it, the local people that are protesting all of these. But this is, again, the United States. I know that in Europe there was, uh, especially in, um, in Britain, UK, there were fracking protests. And, uh, yeah, Jean says, I think the United States corporations uh, and people will continue fracking and fracking and oil until they're dead. That's kind of how I feel. I mean, I try to be like, okay, I'm, I'm going to be an activist, but 
it's uh it's tough shahana says mad max they will drink it that is the addiction that's the kind of thing we are up against too we're up against so much next one i got a couple of good couple of more now this one here's another trade one and this one is pipeline and gas journal and just to give you an idea get your feet wet okay these are our partner in the oil and gas industry and these are projects all projects i'm not going to read them this is Capitalism at its finest. These are keeping people at work. Enbridge applies for construction of Great Lakes Pipeline Tunnel, and that's controversial because that goes underneath the Great Lakes, which is what we were fighting. And then Michigan and TC Energy proceeds with Keystone XL after Alberta commits $1.1 billion. Sempra Energy to continue with Costa Azul and LNG, and that's in um, Mexico. Even as the coronavirus pandemic suppresses worldwide energy demands. They are not stopping. And they've gotten waivers. These companies, at least in the United States, they've gotten, they've gotten um, waivers so they could work. Uh, but this was a good one. I liked this one. The U.S. court orders full. This was back in March, a full review, uh, environmental review of Dakota Access Pipeline. Yes, we put that on the page. When that happened, finally, okay, let's see, Phillips 66, Red Oak Liberty Ace Pipelines deferred by cost cuts. Mm -hmm, okay, we like to hear things are deferred. Maybe they'll, they'll put them away. Um, another delay, look at that. I think March was a pretty good delay month. Did it take a, uh, took a coronavirus? But they're still working, guys. They're still working. FERC. Oh, that lovely corrupt uh, in the pocket of <laughs> the, the FERC is so corrupt. Approves Pembina, Jordan Cove, LNG. They're going to rubber stamp everything in this in this FERC. They rubber stamped the shit during Obama. Well, now they're even they're not even looking at what they're rubber stamping anymore. Probably getting like a, you know, a, something under the table. Here you go. CPC pipeline expansion in doubt after leadership shakeup. I like those. That was a Caspian pipeline consortium expansion project. Well, we'll have to look it up. That was in March, so maybe the, the after its entire board was dissolved. You know what? Wait a second. Well, that's I, I have to do the applause for that one. All right, I like that. And then there is. Let's see. Up oh, here's a, a one. Tallgrass Energy announces open season on Pony Express pipeline expansion, and this is in Colorado. Uh, it's uh, Wyoming to Colorado, Colorado fracks. Reverse cap line pipeline set to begin light crude service in 2021, uh, and this is Canadian, and it's going to Louisiana. Enbridge, that lovely company. Ugh that lovely company um they're going to expand the valley crossing pipeline oh that's just wonderful we uh mm, we don't like that no onek uh one oak one okay <laughs> suspends expansion projects amid oil price collapse so some of these are good but it's only because of coronavirus will they come back that's for another live stream. So you get the idea. It goes on and on. I don't like Alaska. LNG passes major permitting milestone. Hurdles remain. They'll get through the hurdles. People in Alaska, they get money from this. And their politicians are not exactly... Um, they're capitalists to the nth degree. Pipeline upgrades to increase national gas flows into New England. Just lovely. Oh, here, Nigeria to back 2.5 billion AKK gas pipeline with sovereign guarantee. And Coastal Link 
coastal gasoline construction allowed to continue and that's um Canadian authorities on Sunday back in March said construction would continue on TC Energy's coastal gasoline pipeline after reaching a tentative deal with the indigenous group that is protesting. And though the indigenous people in the United States and in Canada, they are the protesters because these pipelines go through their sacred grounds and it is horrible, hideous, disgusting, and it is not justice. American Illinois continues to modernize, 8.5 million. Oh, let's see, Williams, I remember this one, this was happy. Yes, they canceled the um, New York Constitution pipeline. We were really happy about that. Now, what are they doing? The US Supreme Court back in February, they, they leaned towards the Atlantic coast. Okay, so basically, I look at, I could go on, it's 59 pages. 59 pages of all of this construction shit. And it goes on to El Salvador and Russia and, uh, oh, this was back in, in December. So do you get where I'm going, guys? Do you understand? Uh-oh, I think I shut everything down. Oh, I might have lost my stuff. Well, I did. I lost my stuff. But... If I want to, I can pull some more up, but I've been on for a while. Uh, I just, but you know what? I wanted to get one more. I can't believe I, oh, wait, maybe I didn't close it. Mm, yes, I did close it. I, um, I was going to pull up the most recent mess. And if you're all happy and you give me a minute, I'll, 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 I'll re-pull it up. The current um, oil and gas of the oil, what is it? The oil wars with um, Russia and um, China. I thought we would end with that. And of course I, I closed it out. So let's see what these are called and then we'll find the right one. Okay guys, let's see. Let me open this up. Sorry about that. I, you know, The most recent one, China buys record volume of Russian oil. Maybe this is the one. Reuters. All right, we can look at this because this is exactly what's going on. China's buying a record 1.6 million tons of Russian oil for loading at sea over the next four weeks. So this, is, this has been happening, okay? And this was 18 days ago, but... The article I had was much better. Uh, the, the volumes make for new monthly record of uh, Ural supply to China after they surpass 1.2 million tons in January. It also provides a lifeline to Russian firms as they struggle to sell oil in Europe because the coronavirus has led to deep fall in demand. But at the same time, rival Saudi Arabia has pledged to flood customers with crude in a market share battle with Russia. The deliveries could also indicate China's use is using uh, the collapse in oil pro, uh, prices to fill its strategic reserves. I don't even want to read it anymore. You know what I want to talk about? Just how insane it is. So I gave you pictures, graphics of what these things look like. We talked about where they are. We've talked about... Uh, the construction industry, the gas industry, what we are up against. And I don't mean to be a naysayer. I'm certainly not advocating for no um, activism. Because, like I said before, you know that if something came through here, I'm on top of it with the other activists here. We did it, and we would do it again. <sighs> Anyway, let's see what's going on in the chat. I, I, there's a, a lot of activity. Um, a lot of activity. And I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Except for the last one. Val says we're on track for Armageddon. <laughs> Do you agree, CB? And CB says the handwriting is on the wall. Like how, uh, yeah, and, and Shirhana, we have to understand what we are up against, especially if we're going to be activists. 
that's why I do this. That's why when I started live streaming and first live streamed, I talked about this issue, pipelines. I talked about all of this. My God, my notes were really great. Just the thousands and thousands of miles of these and the leaks, the information is out there, but you have to know what trade journals to look for. It's not like I sit around every day looking at trade journals or any, or any of that, but um, it's fascinating. And you cannot just go into saying, okay, we want green energy when green energy is all created by fossil fuels. I'm not sitting here with a solution today. I'm not saying we shouldn't go forward with using a lot more green energy, but we also have to realize the trade off. And we also have to realize that it, when we talk about the numbers and oh my God, by 2030, we have to be. Well, if we have to be, think of the pictures I showed in the beginning of all of those refineries, the ocean drilling, um, you know, the pipelines from all over the world. And just think about, well, how are we going to do it? Which is beyond the scope of me today. I'm just presenting what's out there, food for thought, to realize nothing is simple. This is the biggest this is what this is the deep state this is the fossil fuel industry who controls the world this is what we're up against and yet we may hear that these oil companies and gas companies are um, understanding that they have to change to some um uh you know in saudi arabia for they have solar panel farms out in the desert. But does that mean they're going to stop selling and drilling their oil for as long as they have it? And then peak oil, that's a whole other topic that I don't have enough time to go into today at all. At all. So, oh, you're all talking about veganism and I'm talking about oil. <laughs> Do you need oil to grow vegetables? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, guys, um, Karen, thank you for coming. And everybody, don't forget Jennifer and I are going to have a birthday party on the weekend, probably Friday night. My birthday, Amy Lynn's birthday. Um, if she, if I don't know if she's going to join us. Um, geez, it's my mother's birthday, the 17th. It's a lot of birthdays. Somebody else's was today that I thought was important and I forgot who it was. If it's your birthday, tell me. So guys, even though I didn't get to all of the comments, I don't have a clue how many people are watching on Facebook. Um, thank you for coming and, and being with me today. I think Facebook is a slow and quiet day. Oh, it looked like 14 people. Well, that's good. All right. Well, I hope I taught you something. I hope I gave you food for thought. And it is going to be 45 minutes in two seconds, and that's long enough for me to sit. Thank you, everybody. CB, Jean, um, Val, North, Richard Monroe, Kim, thank you, um, Old Age Joe, and Shahana, thank you so much for coming. Peace, and we will see you on the weekend. Thank you.